I can't believe it. I mean, I've been rabbiting on about this all season long. I can't believe how quick people were to write off Garoppolo. I mean, it's mm. ridiculous and representative, I think, of the generation that we live in that very short memories and it, it, w- it was absurd. And, and last night, as you say, the best game of, his, of the season, probably the best game of his career, uh, demonstrating that they are a, a pretty complete unit. We know defensively what they can do. Offensively, I mean, look at the... We were chatting about this before we came on air. If one of the running backs doesn't go, if Tevin Coleman, he had a yeah. difficult day at the office because he was getting the carries, couldn't get anything going. Matt Breida steps up, no problem. Yeah. Uh, they've added Sanders, who's just slotted straight in there as well. This offense is really cohesive. And you've got this, one of the best defenses in the NFL alongside him. And they ha- are the real deal. The, the record represents that. The question is, Tom Deacon. Oh, he, here we go. Put him in a spot. Are they go. good enough to get and win the Super Bowl? Get to and win the Super Bowl? Currently, at the moment, yes. However, I, I feel like the Saints are a very strong team. Uh, uh, pe- people are forgetting that, how good defensively they are. Who do you fear most in the NFC? Always uh, Green Bay. Always Aaron Rodgers. More than the Saints. More than the Saints, because uh, I, I remember an NFC Championship game that, with the Niners back in the day where it was a Drew Brees and Alex Smith, um, rest his soul. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sort of, is there some breaking news? I don't no, know. no, there's okay. no breaking okay. news, but okay. I just, I just okay. love him. I hope he makes that uh, comeback. But, okay. but um, I, I fear Aaron Rodgers and what he's able to do at the moment. Defensively, I think they're there for the taking, the Green Bay Packers. You think so? Because a lot of people are quite big on their defense. You think I think they you were like the big matchup. on them, but I feel like that, that there is times in their play that, offensively they're rolling and especially with the two Aarons you've got Jones now running yep. Matt LaFleur that system's working yep. Aaron Rodgers making plays like you wouldn't believe those are the two teams that scare me uh, the most but the Niners and I think you, you put it perfectly you've got such a running back committee uh, next man up situation we had McGinchley the right tackle left tackle Joe Staley go out mm. next man up and the confidence I think there's a couple of games this year the Niners could have lost and it would have changed the whole dynamic. But mm. you've got a team that are rolling on confidence. And everyone doubted Jimmy G. His five interceptions in, the, in preseason and what have you. You're thinking, and he has been throwing interceptions. But last night he didn't. Sanders is there making plays. Mm. Uh, it's an exciting time for the Niners. And I, I definitely think that they will uh, be challenging. It would, it would take a really, really good performance. Because schematically, they're playing so well. Like they know how to deal with every situation. The Seahawks you mentioned obviously coming yeah. up, which is the last chance for the Seahawks in that division, right? Mm. It's looking at the moment that certainly a first round buy and possibly, probably home field advantage, which mm. is, which is going to obviously be really significant. So where is it going to, looking, we're hyping up the positives, all the good things that are happening, where could it fall down, do you think? Is there a certain player, look at the Texans, JJ Watt goes down. Yeah. They're, they're still going to feel they're going to make the playoffs. But when you get to the, that crunch stage of the season, you're up in a divisional game, championship game possibly, you're missing a player like that, it severely diminishes your chances, right? Yeah. Who in the team are you most scared of, or other than Garoppolo, you're most scared of losing, do you think could really affect the balance, imbalance the side to a detrimental degree? Um, at the moment, you'd, you'd look at George Kittle and mm. say he, he's, he's the comfort blanket he's the safety blanket for, for that quarterback uh, Jimmy G to if he's not there on that third down who who else are you going to throw to and he got a little bit banged up in that game uh, I think at the moment Quan Alexander uh, has had an MRI um, very shortly we'll be having one of those and mm. as soon as he was out of the game our linebacker um, he's been just revolutionary the whole defense has been revolutionary so without him that 88 yard touchdown happened mm. so you've got um You've got Greenlaw, you've got uh, Aziz Al Shahir. What a name! I love that. Love um, it. If it, back in the days where you had to put letter, you had to pay for each letter on the back of your jersey, <laughs> you'd be livid with that. However, uh, I, I feel like it, losing George Kittle offensively would be a real comfort blanket for Jimmy G to be to be lost there. But it, it has been a situation. The next man up, mm. you said Kyle um, Chusiek. Like, what, what does he offer? Yeah. Um, but he offers so much but we've survived without him mm. so I feel like when you say about JJ Watt and the, the Houston Texans defensively they haven't been as strong as the Niners they lose another piece offensively they have to be even better and yeah. Deshaun Watson has been fantastic but he can't carry the whole team mm. whereas I think with the, the there's a balance on that Niners team so I think yeah if, if any one piece was to go George Kittle would be that man Hope you enjoyed the Nat Coombs show presented by Paddy Power Fantasy. There's plenty more where that came from. Just click subscribe to ESPN UK and you won't miss a trick.